where there is power of redemption. Anyone that is walking in the power of redemption, they never experience lack. They experience plenty. And where there's plenty, there'll be increase. There'll be manifestation of increase. It is the power of redemption that gets rid of lack. I want to talk about this man called Isaac. In the book of Genesis chapter 26, Genesis 26, if you check from verse 1, there is an introduction of a famine. Bible says there was a famine like that one that was there in the time of his father Abraham. So the same thing repeats itself. Another pattern repeats itself. A pattern wanted to repeat itself in the life of Isaac as it was in Abraham's life. And he wants to go down to Egypt because when there was famine in the time of Abraham, his father, he went down to Egypt. And watch this, a pattern is about to repeat himself, to repeat itself. And God tells him, don't go down to Egypt, stay here and I will bless you. I will make you prosperous. What God was telling him is that the power of redemption breaks patterns. You know, the devil is a rude spirit. He would want to enforce evil and demonic patterns in our lives. But where the power of redemption is, a pattern can never form. I say it again, where the power of redemption is, an evil and demonic pattern can never form. And therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus, cut of this power of redemption. Any evil pattern that was forming in your life be broken now. So Isaac set us in Gera. Gera was a land of the Philistines. If you just 26 and verse 6, he set us in Gera. And now in verse 12, Bible says, then Isaac sowed in that land. Genesis 26 verse 12 Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. There was a recession in the land. There was famine in the land. And he wanted to go down to Egypt but God tells him, mm -mm, don't go anywhere. And he sows in the land and he had hundredfold harvest. When others were not harvesting he is harvesting. Why? Because he carries the power of redemption. And the power of redemption brings a distinction. Yes, it brings, so it brought a distinction between Isaac and the inhabitants of the land. Because a man is carrying the power of redemption. To him, it's different. His life is different. It's called the power of redemption. That's what it can do. Verse 13 says, And the man waxed great. The man waxed great. Oh, it's the power of redemption that is responsible of waxing great. Listen, with this power of redemption, you are waxing great in Jesus' name. And he went forward. He never stagnated. You know, when, where there is recession, there will be stagnation. I declare, no more stagnation in your life. With the power of redemption, you can never stagnate. From today, no more stagnation. This man, he went forward and grew until he became very great. Mm. Isaac grew until he became very great. This is your portion. Where there is power of redemption, there is plenty, there is growth, there is no stagnation, there is growth. I declare, growth is your portion. You are moving forward. You are not stagnating. Now, verse, verse 15 says, um, verse 14, sorry, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions Mm -hmm. of herds and great store of servants and the Philistines envied him they envied him to a, a point of closing up the wells of his father watch this verse 16 and Abimelech said this is the king he, he, he summons him he said unto Isaac go from us hey I love it the man had waxed great he had become so great that he became a threat to a nation. Isaac, one man army, he becomes a threat to a nation. And they tell him, the king of the land tells him, please 
get away from us. Go from us. Thou art much mightier than we. Why? It's the power of redemption that was at work. Because where it is, there is increase. There is plenty. There is manifestation of increase. There is multiplication. This man grew to dimensions where he was a threat to the economy of the nation. He was a threat to the security of a nation. They told him, go. He had small servants. He had worked great. When it came to him, passing on and releasing the blessing of this power of redemption to his son, Jacob, in chapter 27 and verse 27 of Genesis, let's see what happens. Um, then he came near and kissed him. This is Jacob now. He's being blessed by his father. And the father is releasing this power of redemption to him. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment. And blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. Ah! He changes his smell. Listen, in the realm of the spirit, you need to smell good. For you not to repel but attract, you need to smell good. What, what does Isaac release? Isaac releases supernatural fragrance of heaven unto his son Jacob. This power of redemption carries supernatural fragrance, perfume of heaven that makes you smell good, hence attract. Hey, glory to Jesus. Verse 28, therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven. Isaac is releasing. This power of redemption plugs you in, into the dew of heaven. This is grace. Grace, something you've not worked for. Grace, the dew of heaven, and common grace, and common favor. So this power of redemption is releasing grace to you in the name of Jesus. Really receive the dew of heaven. Receive grace and common favor. It's your portion. He says, and the fatness of the earth. Wow. When the power of redemption is upon you, what you carry, what you access is the fatness of the earth. You know the earth at its own fatness. May you access the fatness of the earth. This power of redemption, when you have it, you access, you have access to the fatness of the earth. Then it says, and plenty of corn and wine. Plenty of corn, that's the word. Plenty of wine is the Holy Spirit. I declare to you right now, the power of redemption carries in it plenty of wine. Plenty of word that is corn, plenty of wine, the Holy Spirit. Let there be overflow of the word of God in you. Let there be overflow of the Holy Spirit in you in the name of Jesus. It's called the power of redemption. All this is your portion. Isaac is releasing what he has. The way Peter looked at the cripple and said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. What am I releasing? The power of redemption in your life. Mm, what the Father has given me, what I have in me by the grace of God, I release it on you now and I pass it on you. The power of redemption is your portion. Now verse 29, it says, let people serve you. Ah, let This is your portion. Let people serve you. It says also, and nations bow down before you. This is your portion. Let people serve you. Let nations bow down to you. Be Lord. Be Lord, be Lord over your brethren. This is your portion. Uh -huh. And let, and be Lord, let thy mother's sons, wow, let thy mother's sons bow down to you. Now, whoever curses you is cast. This is your portion. You have no business cursing anyone or responding to anyone, but anyone who tries to shack around you, anyone who tries to curse you, that curse is upon them. And then he says, and whoever blesses you is blessed. This is your portion. So Isaac is releasing what is in him, the power of redemption. What he received from his father, this power of redemption is generational. When it begins to work in your life, it flows to your people. It flows to your children's children. The power of redemption.